EcoFlow has asked me to help introduce one of their newest products, the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, which is a beast of a power station. It's expandable, it's portable, and has a lot of capability. So we're gonna talk about all the specifications of this unit. I'm gonna talk about some philosophies of use for why I like backup power stations like this one that are solar capable and how I intend to use this in the future. And then I'm also gonna tell you that there are some discount codes and links in the description as well as in the pinned comment in case you're interested in getting this unit. And we'll get to price a little bit later because you know these are not inexpensive. Now, before I get into everything, I do wanna mention that Midway USA is the biggest supporter of the channel. And thanks to them, I can make videos like this even though this is a product they don't carry. They just support what I do here and they support the preparedness community as well. So a big thanks to Midway USA. Now, why do I like solar capable battery backup stations for backup generators for a grid down situation or an emergency? Well, first off, they have potential energy stored in them, whereas Fuel is the only potential energy that a gas generator has, which means you have to have that fuel on hand, whereas this is already ready to go in the sense of storing power inside of a battery. So that's a benefit, but in that same vein, we have to understand that you don't need fuel storage then either. And obviously storing gas is difficult. Propane is a little easier, but it still takes up a lot of space and it can get expensive. So those are considerations to make. And then also you don't have to worry about a signature as much with this particular style of generator. They're quiet, they don't give off any fumes or anything like that, and you can actually use them indoors as well. So you don't have to have them outside letting everyone else know that you have power when they may not. And in an emergency, that could be a big deal. And then of course, you also don't have the hazards of running this inside because there are no fumes and no carbon monoxide issues. So that's why I like backup power stations like this compared to traditional generators. Of course, they all have their place and this can actually be charged by a traditional generator as well, but we'll get more into that here in just a second. So what are the benefits of the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 compared to some of the earlier models, as well as some other things that are out there on the market right now? Well, first off, and this is a big one, okay? This unit by itself provides 120 volt and 240 volt power. So originally, the first Delta Pros that came out, you had to have two units combined with an adapter in order to provide 240 volt split phase power. This one does it all by itself. So that's a huge upgrade because you can actually plug a 240 volt appliance right into this and it's good to go. So that's huge and I'm gonna actually talk about one of the intended purposes I have for this unit later on involving the 240 volt connection. Now, another thing that I think is really cool about this new unit is that it has an X boost factor of going up to six thousand watts of output capacity. So what that means is that it can power your higher end appliances, things like dryers, you know, anything you might consider in your house to be important for having during an emergency, this thing can power. So it really gives you all the capabilities you're looking for when it comes to any of your major appliances. Another thing that a lot of people sleep on when it comes to these units that I like a lot is that it functions as a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. Why does that matter? Well, because if you're plugged into something important like a network or a computer or something like that, or maybe you're plugged into something that's medical in nature, something like a CPAP machine or even something more important in the sense of a life or death situation, well, this unit won't be interrupted if there is a grid down or a blackout scenario for the grid. Anything that's plugged into it will just switch over automatically in 10 milliseconds. So you won't even notice that the power outage happened which means all those life-saving devices stay on, which means even if you're gaming on your PC and it's plugged into this unit as well as your router and all the connections are still good to go in that regard, you're still on. So it's really nice to have for that reason. And based on that information, what is my capabilities of charging this and what would be my philosophy of use with this regarding that charging? Because for emergency purposes and for a blackout situation, you might, deploy this in different ways. So I'm gonna share my concept with you so that you might be able to put that into your preparedness plans. Charging wise, you have a lot of options with this unit, okay? First off, you have a wall outlet and all of that is located on the back of the unit, which I will be showing you on the screen right now. We have a wall outlet, then you also have a solar, power, uh, solar panel input and the solar panel input is right next to the car charger input. And depending on the solar panels you're using, you might use that input as well. It just depends on whatever amperage you're looking for. And then there's also an electric vehicle charger on the back, which is 
pretty insane. And then it can be charged by a gas generator too. And the EcoFlow Smart Generator plugs directly into the unit, whereas the wall outlet would be used for more traditional generators, but either way, it could be charged by a gas generator. So that allows you to store power from that generator, let's say during the day, and then use this inside at night while that generator is not running and making noise and bringing attention that you don't want around. So those are things to keep in mind, but there's a lot of charging options and it charges very quickly, especially when plugged into the wall. Now, as a philosophy of use regarding charging, here's kind of how I look at it. These units can be plugged into the wall and you can leave them plugged in, which makes them a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply that stays at basically full charge and acts as a pass-through, but once a power outage occurs, it keeps all of your other electronics that are plugged into it up and running as if there was no power outage. So that's generally how I've been using this, is plugged into the wall while using other appliances on it and then just letting it maintain power if the power ever does go out. And we actually did have our power go out here recently during a severe thunderstorm, and this unit kept running without issue. So that's generally how I would look at it for a philosophy of use, because although you can deploy solar panels and get this charged up and ready to go, that's something that you either have to have the infrastructure in place for, or you have to be willing to deploy it in a mobile sense, but you might not want to always have that out and in the open for everyone to see or for it to be affected by the elements. Whereas while it's plugged in, if an emergency happens, you'll be at 100% power. Your battery won't be drained at all, and you'll start with 100%. And then you can start deploying your alternative methods of power generation thereafter to keep the unit up and running. So that's how I would look at it and that's how I would approach it in the sense of a philosophy of use, okay? And because it has wheels and you can actually deploy a handle that comes out of the bottom and allows you to cart it behind you or around, it's pretty easy to move even though it's very heavy and then it allows you to move it around based on where you need your solar panels to be or whatever else it is. And as I had my 400 watt EcoFlow foldable solar panel deployed, I was getting about 250 watts into the unit based on the sun and everything else at the angles and all that good stuff, of course. Uh, but I was able to run that right outside my front door and have it ran right to the unit and it was going fine, but I could have easily rolled the unit somewhere else if need be and had it set up for a more efficient solar uh, intake. So. That's how I look at it and that's how I use these units in the sense of a preparedness plan. What are the exact specifications and power capabilities of this particular unit? Well, first off, it has a 4,000 watt output. Now, of course, I can X boost up to 6,000 watts, but in general, it's a 4,000 watt standard output and it has a 7,000 watt maximum input. So of course, if you are running solar panels in parallel and you're hooking it up to the unit, it can definitely take a lot of that charge without issue and then has a multi-charge function. So it can be plugged into one thing while charging with another. It allows you to really get that charging in as best you can during peak hours. So that's definitely beneficial. Um, it has 4,096 watt hours on the LFP battery. Now, what does that mean for those of you who might be new to the subject and aren't necessarily really well-versed in solar power and backup power options, right? So 4,096 watt hours means that if you have a appliance that's using 1,000 watts, let's say, right? And you plug it into this unit and it's not receiving any power from anywhere else. So it will burn 1,000 watts an hour, right? And this has 4,096 watt hours. So that means it can take that 1,000 watt appliance and keep it up and running for four hours. Does that make sense? That's basically the layman's terms of how this works. But yes, it can run that for four hours, which is pretty good. But here's the thing. It also has 4,000 cycles in that battery life, which depending on how you use it can equate all the way up to about 11 years. So that's a pretty long lifespan. And it does come with a five-year warranty. So you won't have a warranty for the entirety of the lifespan, but still 11 years is a very long time, which means you can keep things up and running and probably even past that, but with just diminished battery capacity at that point in time. This battery extension you see up here is another option that you can get with the Delta Pro 3. This is actually two separate units here, if you can't tell. This is the extension battery. And with that plugged in into the battery port of the back of the unit here, I expanded it by, well, double. It's another 4,096 watt hours. So this unit has 8,000 plus watt hours of capacity. What does that mean? So in testing, I've been running a Solaris water generator on the unit. And what that is, is an atmospheric water generator, and it's something I'm testing out as well. So I thought, you know, I might as well test these two new high-tech items side by side. And that's basically what I've been doing. Well, here's the thing. 
That thing, when it's running, is pushing out or requiring about 200 watts of power, right? So if that's plugged into this and it has over 8,000 watt hours of capacity and that item is using 200 watts, that means I can run the atmospheric water generator for about 40 hours straight on this unit without any input at all, without any additional solar charging or charging from the wall or anything else. So 40 hours of generating water out of the atmosphere is a pretty good thing to have. So this has a lot of capacity and it can be expanded even further. You could add another battery onto this unit and you can also daisy chain the units together if you were to get another Delta Pro 3 or even two, and then you can actually have a maximum output of 12,000 watts. So that's kind of crazy. It's expensive to do that, but once you have that, I mean, you have a lot of capability, okay? So, it's got seven DC, or direct current outlets, and then it also has seven AC, or, or alternating current outlets, and one of those is the 240 volt outlet, in the front of the machine. And that thing is pretty cool, because like I said before, I had to use two Delta Pros in order to have 240 volt split phase, and now I have one with 240 volts coming right out of the front of the machine, which is great because one of my philosophies of use for this particular unit is to use it with the EcoFlow transfer switch. And I actually have that right here. I just wanted to demonstrate it real quick. Of course, I've got it stuck in here in a tight spot. Okay. So, This is the transfer switch. And all I have to do to get this up and running is plug this cable into the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 and then into the transfer switch right here on the front like you see. And then I have circuits powered to whatever I run them to. So I can actually set this up in an outbuilding, which is probably what's gonna happen run the Delta Pro 3 in that outbuilding, have it hooked up permanently to solar panels, and have a fully off-grid outbuilding that's on a transfer switch that I can just run at any point in time. And in fact, the transfer switch is actually very convenient in general because it's manual and it's not overly complicated. Whereas my smart home panel that I have hooked up to my older Delta Pros um, requires using an app and programming things, getting everything set up, and it doesn't allow you to let's just say, adjust those things post-emergency if you don't have certain connections. So that could be problematic, not that you need to adjust anything at that point in time, but if you wanted to, it could make things more difficult. Whereas this is a little bit more of a simple design and allows you to switch power on and off at will. So I really like the transfer switch concept with this unit because it plugs directly into it. You only need the one unit instead of having to have two like you did with the Delta Pros originally. And then I have off-grid power at an outbuilding. So expect that project at some point in the future whenever I decide I have an outbuilding worthy of off-grid power. Now, what about the technology included with the Delta Pro 3? Well, here's the thing. You can use the EcoFlow app, which allows you to do tons of stuff, and you can also get the Power Insight tablet you see right here. And what that does is a lot of the same things as the app, and in fact, you need the app in order to set this up. So this is where technology comes into play. But once you get everything set up, it's nice to have because you can actually program a lot when it comes to what these units are doing. And you can also use it to just make sure and manage that all your power consumption is where you want it to be. And that way, if you are on an emergency power situation where you need to conserve and make sure that you're not using everything up all at once, you can monitor it more easily. And you can also set it to do certain things like shut down at certain times. You can set it to recharge at certain times. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it, especially if you have the Smart Home Panel 2, which allows you to work with this unit versus my original Smart Home Panel. And then this would go integrate into that so that you could manage that whole system of your house and all of the power consumption and everything else you have going there, especially if you're using it as a way to save money by using solar and then trying to cut your power bill down. This will let you monitor all of that. So this is really useful to have. And here's what's kind of cool about it, just so you're aware, there is a coupon code and it's EFDP3MAGIC, right? And if you use that when you buy one of these units using my links that are down in the description as well as in the pinned comment, you'll get the EcoFlow monitor for free. Now, that sounds like a good deal, but just so you're aware, 
these things are not inexpensive. These are high tech, brand new items, so they're gonna have a price tag on them. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 by itself is $3,699. If you wanna add this battery to have that double expansion when it comes to your capacity, that's gonna run you $5,498. So you have to decide if this is worth it to you. You have to decide if this is a priority for your preparedness when it comes to, well, having backup power that doesn't require fuel, right? It does, but of course you can preload it with your wall outlet. So you have a generator that can provide power even if there is no more fuel, right? And then if you have solar capabilities and you use things like the EcoFlow folding solar panels, which are good, they're efficient and they're portable, so I like them so I don't have to have permanent solar structures outside of my home, which might be uh, like a flame for a moth for those who might be upset that I have power and they don't. Either way, this allows me a lot of that versatility when it comes to how I want to charge this thing and then keep it up and running post an emergency. So this is the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. We could get into way more nitty gritty. We could do a lot more torture testing and things of that nature when it comes to plugging it into crazy appliances and stuff like that. But in my experience so far with EcoFlow products, they generally work the way they're supposed to. They have uh, the capabilities that they're advertised to have. And if there's an issue, EcoFlow will take care of you. And that's just the way it works. So let me know if you have any questions. I will give you any feedback I have when it comes to what this is capable of in the sense of what I've tested so far. And I just want to let you know that there are other EcoFlow units too that are much smaller and much less expensive that still provide you with a level of backup power. It might not be able to power your refrigerator, but it could at least keep all of your emergency supplies up and running during a grid down situation. So keep that in mind too. Anything else you need from me at all, go to magicprepper.com. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.